What's the number one question I get asked? Okay, so even though I like to think I have a lot of stories and life experiences to share, the number one thing I get asked is, what do you do to keep your skin looking good at your age? And that one always catches me off guard because I forget I'm at that age. And also because I just don't look in the mirror ever and think, yeah, your skin looks good. It's just, it doesn't really cross my mind. And I was really, really careless with my skin pretty much my entire life up until I hit my late 30s. So like I said in my very, very first video, um, I just recently turned 48. And I was about 38 or 39 when I started looking into ways to kind of reverse a lot of damage I'd done to my skin in my early years and um, just maintain the integrity of my skin. I don't love the messaging that we're kind of getting hit at by everything in society that we need to reverse our aging and look younger. I think what's most important is to age gracefully embrace aging and really to help keep your skin healthy and maintain the integrity of it throughout your aging process. So there are so many things you can do at different stages of your life to keep your skin healthy. And I wish I had learned about this stuff when I was younger, but it's never too late. I learned this stuff later in life. I guess it's doing a good job and I'm here to share it with you. And I will be sharing everything in my videos, as well as in my blog post, everything that I use, the supplements I take, the lifestyle choices I make, um, and also facial exercises and facial tools that I use. I don't do any skin treatments. Um, microderma, micro, micro, micro dermabrasion, um, lasers, chemical peels. I don't get, I don't have injectables. I don't get them in my forehead. I don't have filler anywhere. So. What you see is 100% a product of what I use, what I take, and I know genetics comes into play, but we can always, you know, be our best selves by using the best products possible. And I don't buy expensive stuff, not because I don't want to, not because I don't want to get all that fancy stuff, but it's just not where my money needs to be funneled at the moment. And so all of this stuff you can buy cheaply for the most part and practice in your very own home. So my skincare journey, I am half Cuban and I have never burnt in my life. I can lay out in the sun and get a great tan. And that's fantastic when you're young, but it's not fantastic when you start to get older and realize you're getting sun damage and sunspots all over. But that's the girl I was like the only really good thing I did consistently for my skin growing up um, was no matter how late or tired I was coming home, I always, always, always washed my face. The problem is I only washed my face with soap and water, like a, literally a bar of ivory soap and water. Um, no serums, no moisturizers, really nothing. I didn't do anything with my skin until I started to really notice changes. And that was, like I said, around 38, 39. At that point, um, my aunt, who is my amazing guru for so many things introduced me to a few different natural ways to support my skin, which we will cover. And one of them was oils. That was the one that I pushed back against the most because I normally have super oily skin and I didn't want to add more oil. I didn't know if it would make my skin feel bad and heavy and cloying. I didn't know it would cause breakouts. She was finally like, look, you need to trust me, gave me a bottle. That started my journey into natural skincare. And now I've got about eight or nine different oils on consistent rotation that I use every single day. And no, it has not made my skin greasier. And no, it has not made me break out. Quite the opposite, actually. So let's talk about the very, very first oil that I was introduced to and started using. And that one is Copaiba. See, make sure it's not too shiny copaiba essential oil this is an essential oil so unlike some of the other oils you can put directly on your face which i also use and love and we'll talk about later um, and include you know squalene rosehip oil marula oil you can put those directly on your skin essential oils you need to dilute with a carrier oil because they're super potent so like one or two drops is more than enough 
and you mix it with a carrier oil, which is like coconut oil or olive oil. And those are fine for me personally uh, to use on your body, your arms, legs, your torso. Those types of oils I don't like to put on my face because they are thicker. And um, I prefer something lighter, especially during the day. So when I very first started using Copaiba to reverse the sun damage that I had done to my skin, I would add a drop to my daily moisturizer. And one of the ones that I really like is the Nourish Oil-Free, ironically, moisturizer from Trader Joe's. I actually really like a lot of Trader Joe's skincare items. This one has a lot of botanicals in it, and it just feels light and refreshing. It's what works for me, um, and the price point is super affordable, and a bottle lasts forever. So I would use these two together, and I used them for 30 days together and really started to see changes in the sun damage that I had uh, accumulated on my skin. And why is Copaiba so good at reversing sun damage and just helping your skin? Well, I'll give you a little background on Copaiba and what it is. Copaiba comes from the Copaibophorus officinalis tree, which is native to the Amazon in South America. And Copaiba has actually been used medicinally for hundreds of years in South America um, because it's got so many wonderful phytonutrients and terpenes and it's I'm gonna go ahead and link below my blog post where I wrote about Copaiba because I, I list out all the different things that it's been used for. There are scientific studies that have been done and it's just a fantastic plant medicine um, that's good for so many things. But we're gonna to stick to the skincare because that's what this is all about. So because it is an anti-inflammatory, antiviral, antifungal and antibacterial, it does a lot to really nourish and help your skin to heal itself. As we get older, our skin isn't able to regenerate basically like it did when we were kids, teenagers even. And so you kind of need all the help you can get. I needed all the help I could get and this stuff really, really, really gave me that help. Um, but Copaiba can also be used for breakout, so acne. It's really good for minimizing scarring. It's also good for psoriasis and acne. Um, a lot of times the medicines that we're given to kind of treat those skin conditions either don't work, uh, stop working after a while, or can cause other irritations. And so I like to go the natural route when it comes to skincare because I feel like your body recognizes this stuff, because it comes from nature, a lot better and faster, although consistency is key. So that's the one thing, don't expect miracles. Um, it did take 30 days for me to really start noticing a difference. Although with things like acne, eczema, and psoriasis, you do see a change a lot sooner. Um, eczema is something that I have dealt with on and off throughout my life. And in my later years, I've dealt with it less because of lifestyle changes that I've made and supplements that I take, foods that I eat, all of which help just my skin in general. But um, once in a while, stress will make me have a little flare and I still haven't quite figured out how to get rid of stress yet. So Copaiba comes in handy. So like I said, I used this, couple of drops of this, in my daily moisturizer in my mornings. Um, my evenings, I do use different moisturizers. I like to use more emollient, thicker ones, but I don't really care what I look like when I go to bed. And, you know, so I'm like a layer cake of serums and oils and potions. But in the day, I like to keep it light and simple. 30 days of that, my skin was completely different. It just became glowier. It was more supple. The, the sun damage was starting to fade. When I have a little bit of, I often get, not so much often anymore, but I still will get some hormonal acne around here. There are different parts of the face that are aligned with different parts of your body. And the chin is typically a hormonal area um, when your hormones are out of whack, which tends to happen when you're in your 40s. Um, so I'll use it as needed. And really, it resolves the problem so quickly and so naturally. I love this stuff. I can't wait to share all of the other things that I do to, I guess, keep my skin looking good at this age. And um, click like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the good stuff. And I'll see you next time.